Time check. Woo, right on time, 11 minutes, baby. The fryer is the only thing that's me. I'm gonna move it to the middle because the middle part got more flame. It's up, I'm trying to set me up for failure here. What's good, what's good? It's your boy, Chef Harold, AKA Uncle Harold, AKA the food hustler. My challenge today is to cook a great classic takeout meal faster than it can get delivered to my door. And if you can see in the background, we're not in the Bronx anymore. We've upgraded now in Martha Stewart's house. Yeah, calling for delivery. Okay, your address? It's 36th Street. Oh, you come to the wrong place. 36th, right? Yes. We are 68, too far. We don't deliver that far. Come on, man. You can make it happen. It's America. No, it's America. So you got to try star over there. It's okay. close. All right. Wait, so, sorry about that. All right, sorry about that. Okay, but <laughs> <laughs> Called the wrong Chinese place. It's too far from the radius. Yeah, calling for delivery. Hold on one second. Uh, can I get a general toast with shrimp fried rice, please? Yeah. How long is it gonna take? Thirty minutes. Perfect. Thank you. You got f thirty minutes. Let's do it. I'm just turning everything on just to get it going. Having hot pans ready to go when you're cooking something fast is a clear advantage. You can control the time and temperature there by pulling the pans off or putting the pans back on. There's a few things that restaurants do to make a great General Tao's chicken. The crispiness of the chicken, the glaze that goes on top of the chicken, the balance between the sweetness and the spiciness. Last but not least, you gotta have a great side dish. So this is all the things that I need to include in my dish today. The way the restaurants get a really crispy chicken is really about the prep first. You need to marinate it in the egg white slurry. It's made with egg whites, a little bit of cornstarch, and a little bit of soy sauce, and some other good stuff in there, sesame oil. And what it does is create this kind of binding agent for anything that you're gonna add onto it, flour, cornstarch, seasoning. It's just gonna stick to it. And when you fry, it becomes this kind of nice coating. That's going into the fridge to marinate for 20 minutes. From there, we create the, the frying batter. Cornstarch, AP flour, baking soda, rice wine vinegar, a little bit of sesame oil, and a little bit of hoisin. And what I'm doing here is I'm clumping this up, and you create these little nooks and crannies, so when you dip the chicken in there, it'll create this crust, and when you fry it, they'll have these little crispy bits and pieces on the side of the chicken. Next, I'm gonna start working on the fried rice. Fried rice is such a money maker because, you know, they use day old white rice and they can extend their food cost. And so I think using day old white rice is key. It creates nice crispiness. It also absorbs a lot more flavor. And if you want to be sustainable, you know, use whatever you got in your fridge from corn to peas to carrots, that carrot corn mix uh, that's in the back of your fridge. Don't do blueberries. I tried that once, that didn't come out right. Once you get this nice toasty brown color on the ginger, that's when we're gonna add the rice. Wanna flatten it out a little bit so it can start creating that crispiness in the bottom like sokarak. And you see what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm moving this stuff around so it won't burn. Season it real quick with a little salt and black pepper. And then we're gonna add a little bit of this fermented crab right here. I like it a lot because it's it's, uh, it has a lot of umami flavor profiles in it, and it also gives such an unctuous flavor profile to anything you add onto it. As you can see, the rice is already turning this bright orange hue. And you're gonna let your rice talk to you, okay? You see, you listening to it right now? You hear the crackle and pop? She's gonna tell you when she's ready or not. She's gonna say, hey, don't forget about me, man. I'm burning. Time check right now, we are at 17 minutes. I feel really good, man, to tell you the truth. I'm almost done. The Chinese food culture in the Bronx where I grew up 
it really was uh, a quintessential meal for everybody. I think it has a little bit more seasoning, <laughs> and I think it has a little bit more uh, love because uh, some of the Chinese restaurants, they kind of incorporated the community aspect in it. If they're in a neighborhood full of Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, they're gonna, they're gonna have a special combo with uh, Platano Maduro with chicken for X amount of dollars. So boom. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. The fusion in the Bronx with the Chinese food was an easy translation for me because it kind of reflected the history of Filipino food with Malay, Chinese, and Spanish influences in the food. So right now, next, we're about to go into making the sauce. First things first, we're gonna take a little bit of garlic. We're just gonna microplane it right into this pot. This is just gonna go ahead and disappear into the sauce itself, you know? Instead of you having these chunks of garlic and stuff like that, you just taste only the flavor. You don't want the garlic to burn, okay? So you wanna pull it off and let it just kinda toast up a little bit slowly. Try not to get too much color. We're gonna add some of these chili flakes and your whole house is gonna smell like love right now. You know what I'm saying? You add a little bit of miso. Miso is gonna give it the nice salinity that you need. Low sodium soy sauce. A little bit of hoisin. Just a little bit of chicken stock right here. And then, you're gonna add a little brown sugar, okay? Then, the most important part of Chinese or, or Asian cooking, a little bit of cornstarch. So what's gonna happen here is, it's gonna get thicker and thicker once we add the cornstarch. And you wanna keep stirring, you wanna control your heat, you wanna turn it down a little bit, so you don't burn it, all right? Oof, smells like General Tao's to me. That looks good right there. And now, we're going into frying the chicken, okay? Time check. Woo, right on time, 11 minutes, baby. What I'm gonna do is, I think the fryer is the only thing that's me. Uh, I'm gonna move it to the middle because the middle part got more higher flame. Martha Stewart's house is up. Trying to set me up for failure here. Sauce is here, that's ready, rice is ready. What I'm gonna do now too, there's a little trick. I'm gonna dump crab meat on top just to let it warm up to the temperature. Then we're gonna fold it later, okay? I'm gonna go to the fridge and grab the chicken. So what we're looking for is a 350 fry oil. It's worldly known that you gotta fry shit at 350 because if it's at 300, I've done it before. All the breading goes everywhere. I get yelled at by a French chef talking about I don't know how to fry fried chicken and I'm American. I think the one thing I made a mistake is putting the fry oil to the top left. I should have made my sauce on the top left and kept the fry oil in this middle one where there's a bigger burner. That's the only mistake that I think I made throughout my whole life. Because I could have been frying right now, it could have been ahead. You know what I mean? But it's okay, it's okay. One thing about life, you don't attach yourself to the outcomes, okay? One of the best techniques to you, for you to get really crispy chicken is the double fry. So once you get the batter going, you fry it once at 350, then you turn it up a notch to 375, and you fry it again to encapsulate the dish and cook it through and get that extra crispiness in that chicken. Look like a chicken nugget. That's what you want it. I'm gonna chop up some chives real quick. And one little trick that I learned in fine dining, especially if you're gonna chop up like a million of these things because French chefs love their chives, man. So what you wanna do is, you wanna fold this up a little bit, you bring it all the way across. What you get is this little spear. And what it does is, it helps hold your chives in place while you're angrily cutting it because this mother wants 500 grams of this. So once you get to this point here, you pull it up, you do the same thing again, and now you can call yourself a fine dining chef because you know how to chop chives like the best of them. Nice. We are in the game. We're still waiting for the Chinese food, so I think we're winning here, Morgan, all right? I'm gonna go straight for it. But this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take the chicken, so I'm gonna just double fry it for three minutes. And then I'm gonna toss it in the sauce right after, okay? Like KFC, baby. You wanna keep moving this around, but then keep moving your sauce around. You don't want it to get too sticky. Woof! Right into this. Oh my goodness. What you wanna do is, be fancy, you wanna to toss this thing. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Wow, look at that thing. Oh man, my mouth is salivating. 
get it real quick. Boom, a little sesame, a little chive action. Mm, for all my French chefs, I love you. That's for you. The best part about it is you get to be the first one to taste, because you made it. I mean, bam! Seriously, it's good as shit. Um, if that thing comes and doesn't taste like this, they're I'm gonna go and plate up. Every time I'm cooking, I'm always thinking about my mom or somebody I care about, somebody that meant something for me. The energy transfers to your food. If you ever cooking for somebody, they're always gonna appreciate you uh, putting the most effort into it, especially putting love into it. Oh shit, the Chinese restaurant. Yeah, hello? Yeah. yeah, who's this? It's not. Delivery? Yeah. Yeah, where are you at? Sixth floor, sixth floor. Sixth floor, all right, somebody's gonna come get you. Okay. Thank you. Chinese food just came. Now we're about to see the difference between the, this dish and this dish. I'm gonna add my secret ingredient, the palapa on top, and then we'll see what happens next. So palapa in Filipino food is used mainly by the Mindanao region. This is the Muslim uh, kind of distortions of people down there in Mindanao. So they don't eat a lot of pork and a lot of uh, meat overall. So they created this spice called palapa. It's made out of coconut, chilies, mushroom powder, scallions, and it's sauteed together. And they just add it into the dishes. So we're going to add that here. A little bit more love. You know what I mean? Oof. Look at that thing. All right, and then a chai bomb one time for my French chefs. That's for you. So this is our plated dish here. I almost beat the timer, but my fryer fucked me. I was only like 20 seconds late, okay? Yeah, technically we did beat the delivery guy. So, so yeah, so we did win. So this is the regular packaging of, of New York uh, takeout delivery. We give you the smiley bag, plastic bag, which they're not supposed to have anymore because it's against the law. And then, this is it right here. From the top of my head, I'm guessing the guy was busy, whoever was making the Chinese food. Probably had a lot of orders, and he was rushing it. The wok was too hot. You can tell the kernels are a little burnt over here. Also, the sauce itself is runny. I can tell there's a lot of sugar on this, too. So this is going to be a lot sweeter than, um, than what I had here. I didn't do the broccoli. It's up. I'm sorry. All right, so I'm just gonna do a nice bite, okay? Um, a little bit of general towels, and we ordered shrimp fried rice, so I'm gonna put a little shrimp on there. It's soggy. The sauce itself is muddled. It's really one tone. It's just sweet. There's really no spice to it. I've had Chinese food all over this city and every bar, except for Staten Island, <laughs> Staten Island. This flavor profile right here is basically kind of the same all across New York City. And let's try my general towels version with crab fried rice and some palapa. You want to add all that in there together in one bite. I mean, off the jump, it's crispy. There's layers of flavor there. There's spice. There's um, umami. The palapa is just putting it to another level. I mean, seriously, I would charge people $25 for this dish. You know, the lump crab is expensive, so. But it's so good. As we spoke about before, the key components of having a great General Tao's chicken is glaze of the sauce on the chicken, as we see here. Also, the side dish itself. As you can tell the difference, we have a shrimp fried rice here. That's, I only see two shrimps. And then uh, a crab fried rice with huge lumps of, uh, of crab on it and this beautiful orange color of the hue. And then also kind of the texture of the dish where uh, the chicken was crispy and this one was a little bit soggy from kind of over saucing it. So if I'm rating from one to 10, I think I give myself a hard, hard 15. A, I really enjoyed it and I'm super prideful about it. And I stand behind it. And two, it's really comforting, the, the, the flavor profiles here. This really reminds me of some stuff that my mom would make or my father would make. And it really reminds me of my roots of coming back home to the Philippines. But it's also a fusion of New York City Chinese food. I can't knock this because I've grown up on it. And like we spoke about before, this meal right here for 10 bucks, you know, this can last you all day from lunch to dinner, yeah? So it's fed me and, and kind of nourished me. So I can't really knock it. So I'm not gonna give it a score because this is just regular New York Chinese hood food. And I think you should just appreciate that if you're, if you're from New York.
if you uh, want to take the time to learn the techniques, learn about time and temperature, and do it on your own, you don't have to order out that night. You can create something delicious and you can create something that you're proud of and showcase some of your talents to your friends and family. So one more time, like we always say, never forget where you come from, otherwise you become a asshole. Bon appetit, South Bronx all day, please. Anything that comes out of the fryer, please season, okay? Don't be an asshole not seasoning, okay? Learn that the hard way too. The motherfucker makes you fry it again and eat and make you eat it. The restaurant industry is so rough, dude. <laughs>